we're back with another episode. This episode of the Face Off with Fleming and Fowler is sponsored by MyApothecary.com. My Apothecary is the premier online destination for hemp-derived CBD that will help you curate a wealthy lifestyle. Welcome back to another episode of the Face Off with Fleming and Fowler. We are back at it again. Super Bowl Sunday. It is. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. It's, uh, I was going to say it's Black Sunday. It's what, what does black that mean? History Month. Yes, it's definitely Black History it's, Month. Happy Black History Month. I'm blackity black, the black, blackity black. No? Mm hmm. Okay. You are. We are together. That's yes. right. Black, black Lives Matter. Black they PTs sure do, matter. Especially this month. Black, especially on Friday. <laughs> <laughs> inside Jeez. joke black ot's matter black speech therapists matter black rehab aids matter black restorative aids matter boom all right how was your week this week man my week was good i went to work i came home i went back to work the next day that's all i got <laughs> rinse and repeat yeah it was a long week at work um you know when your job sends you out multiple announcements yeah. on a Friday that they're going to have a bunch of different snacks and activities, and that's how you know shit's going to be fucked up? Mm -hmm. It was one of those weeks, but we made yeah. it through. So yeah, that's all I got. I'm just, yeah, I'm just here. <laughs> <laughs> what about you? How was your week? Uh, my week was wonderful, man. I um, It was wonderful. I, I have to say, Friday... February the 5th will be etched in my brain forever, 2021, because that was the very first time in my life I ever felt my ancestors take over my body. Thank you, Rosa Parks. Thank you, Rosa. No, it wasn't even Rosa. It was Sojourner Truth and Harriet combined in my bloodstream on Friday. Cicely Tyson. Oh, ooh, Cicely, baby. It was just, it was an amazing week. It was, I literally last night... I just had a Zen moment. I was able to like sleep all day. I didn't even get out of the bed till three o'clock. Um, and then I went and it was like one o'clock in the morning. I was like, you know what? I want to take a bath. So I went and like made me a little bubble bath and I just soaked in the tub. I had my little Zen music on, just soaking or whatever. And it was just me and myself and I. And it was wow. amazing. You should listen to sound bath music. Do you ever do that? No, that's what I was listening to on sound Apple bath? Music. Mm -hmm. Oh, good, good shit. It was wonderful. I love a sound bath. But then it was too quiet because then I started hearing things and I was like, hmm, maybe I should get out of the tub and go get my gun. So I did. And put it right just there. You and bubbles with a gun. Yeah. And I just, it's like when you are finally quiet in your own house, even though I live by myself, you still hear every single thing. And I was just like, hmm, did somebody just break into my house? I don't know, but you're going to get a bullet in your ass if you do. So, yeah. But other than that, my, my week was really good, though. Really good. Really good. Yeah. I'm glad. I love that for you. Yeah. I'm not ready to go to work tomorrow. No, oh. 48 hours is too short to be a weekend. Listen, the moment somebody said that the weekend is really only 48 hours, like, it you didn't have to you. say that. Yeah. You didn't have to put it in that perspective. Two days sounds a lot better than 48 yes, hours. Yes. That sounds a lot longer than 48 hours because it's literally like, oh, what if you only had, you know, two hours to live and you're just counting down? It's like, what the hell? Don't, yeah. don't tell me stuff like that. So yeah, I need like, to switch my schedule to four days a week. I need to skip uh, switch mine to one day a week <laughs> and still get paid the same as forty hours. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let me know what job that is. Of course, prostitution. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> it's Stri called sex stripping. work. Prostitution has a negative connotation. Uh, sex work sounds worse. <laughs> so what do you do? Not for a in living? the eyes of the law. I'm a sex worker. <laughs> and what do you do Which for a living? Way better. I'm a prostitute. I'm prostitute. I'd rather say prostitute. I, I'm tooting out here. Totting and bobbing. <laughs> tooting and booting. Tooting and booting. All right. So let's go ahead and get into some some hot topics, first of all. Well, no. First of all, let's just say this. We already said it. Happy Black History Month. It is Black History Month. It shortest is month of the year. Shortest month of the year. But we're grateful we have something. And within this Black History Month, we have had a few different amazing things that have taken place uh, that just this month. Um, the Black Lives Matter movement or the hashtag Black Lives Matter was nominated for the 2021 Nobel Peace Prize for its powerful message of equality, solidarity, and human rights. Also, too, Stacey Abrams, um, who we all know and love, she ran for um, 
governor of Georgia, and she also, um, along with other pe- many other people who helped to basically save this country um, in this last election, Stacey Abrams was nominated for a Nobel Peace Prize um, for her role in, um, yeah, for her role in the election with regard to her company that she created for because um, she got all those people to vote or what? Exactly, because she registered so many different people to vote, and she made sure to ensure that voter, um, not voter fraud. What is it? Voter Turnout? repression. Oh, repression. Yeah, um, suppression. suppression. So, <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad we're on the same page. <laughs> voter suppression um, was, you know, xed out with regard to this uh, presidential election. Um, so that's been an amazing thing. So congratulations to them, to both Black Lives, the Black Lives Matter movement, as well as Stacey Abrams for being nominated for a Nobel Peace Prize. I think that's absolutely amazing. That's insane. A whole Nobel Peace Prize. I mean, it's amazing. Like, it's amazing. If you got nominated for a Nobel Peace Prize, or no, just a prize, like a no, there's multiple Nobel Prizes, yeah? Yeah. What would you want it to be for? It definitely wouldn't be for peace. I can tell you that much right now. I'm a bit she rowdy. You wake up every day and choose violence. Yeah, so not absolutely. Well, not not violence. Radicalness. There you go. I'm a radical, and I'm okay with that. Um, also, too, with oh wait, I was supposed to answer that yeah, question. I, um, you don't have to. Just I don't know. How many, right what, what other types of pieces? Uh, not pieces. What other types of Nobel prizes are there? Well, you know what? I'll like, tell what's the you. category? Siri. Category is no. I'm not gonna ask Siri this time. Because <laughs> I would like to know yours. Um. So, literature, chemistry, physics, economics, physiology, or medicine, and then the Peace Prize. Yeah, give me the peace. Uh, I mean, I wouldn't, I wouldn't do anything in medicine because I'm over it. So, yeah, I mean, maybe literature. I'd like to write some shit, and people are like, "Whoa, mind blowing." I'm gonna put, can I do it audibly? <laughs> That's not with no. that. No. Nope. Can mm-hmm. I just like dictate it and then it you just can write it, it and then audio book it? Can I just audio book it and then it just like dragon dictation and it dictates it? Okay, you're, you're, you won't be a doctor. You said you didn't want to do anything in medicine. So, okay, yeah, my question is over. Continue. Yeah. <laughs> so also to um, some sadder news, uh, this past week actually Dustin Diamond, who is also known for playing the character of Screech on Saved by the Bell, um, he passed away at the age of 44 from his battle with cancer. What kind of cancer do you have? Prostate. Um, he had lung cancer. Oh, not a good one. That's a lung cancer. cancer in the time of COVID. Yeah. Cause it went fast. Cause he literally told people about it, and then like I think like the next week he was dead. Also, Dustin Diamond sounds like a porn star name. Well, you know he did do porn after Say by the Bell. Remember that? Yeah. Say by the Bell. And then he was like a real asshole. I mean, rest in peace. But I'm just saying, he was like really weird. But yeah, he did his whole porn thing. He was strange. Did he have a show, like a reality show? I think he did. That sounds about right. I think he did. And I watched one. I think I watched one episode of it. And I was like, he yeah, had no, stage four lung cancer. He was on a reality show. I wonder Celebrity if he was a smoker. Club. I wonder if he was a smoker, though. Weren't they all smokers? I feel No, because like? even um, what's his name? Um, the guy that plays Superman, Christopher Reeves, his wife, she died of lung cancer and she didn't smoke a day in her life. I just feel like celebrities are smokers. I mean, it's it, cigarettes are everywhere. It's like in it's jail. A bias, but not, I mean, not jail, but military. In the military, it's everybody's like jail. <laughs> yeah, everybody smokes cigarettes in the military. Like they literally give people in the military cigarettes. Dude, speaking of jail, you know how there's different talks. There's like book talk and yeah. um, chef talk, perfume talk, whatever on TikTok. Prison talk, top tier. Do you watch it? No, but why do they get phones in prison? They sneak that shit in, but prison talk is chef's kiss it's so <laughs> fucking good it's so good i used to work in a prison so mm, maybe the yeah no the glamour is gone for you but i watched yeah. i literally just watched it for hours at a time it was nothing like orange is the new black no no no. this all. is like guys in prison streaming fucking shit that, are they like like doing a podcast in prison or something yes there are people that do That's podcasts insane. in prison your hustle you should listen to it it's good but these are like they're it's, streaming scissors new music video in prison or what? like they're all doing dance chat like tiktok dances in prison this is how you make a prison burrito this is how we do this in prison that oh, is insane. I love it. I'm what obsessed. okay so let me ask you this question remember that there was this thing that was going around i think maybe like a year ago that if you were given the option to spend two weeks in prison to have all your student loans paid off. Would you do it? Club fed or like prison? You don't get to choose prison. They just drop me somewhere. They just drop you somewhere. Sw- San Quentin for two weeks to get all your student loans but paid off. But is it female pop? I would hope so. They ain't gonna, pop. Jesus, you're going to get raped and killed in there. Nah, it's definitely female if you're a female, male if you're a male. And Dude, yeah. I don't know if I could hack prison. I don't know if I could do it. I think I could. You probably could, but you worked in a prison. That's not I would fair. Just, I would just like probably punch somebody in the face and just go get sent to the hole for two weeks. Just leave me by myself for two weeks. I can get so much rest. 
Fuck, dude. I don't know if I can. For two weeks, two though. Two weeks. I think. I, mm, you do it. You'd be stupid if you didn't do it. <laughs> Je, you guys let us know in the comments. Would you spend two weeks in jail to have all your student loans forgiven? I got a hefty loan payment, so I may, I may do it. Two weeks? And that's all your meals paid. No rent. You, you got, got cable? Nothing. You end up doing the June bug challenge? Come obviously, on. Obviously. You get if someone could sneak me TikTok, yes, I'll go to prison for two weeks. Yeah, I, I would could read some it. books. I don't necessarily want to be in San Quentin, but I would, I would absolutely go for two weeks. I would do i don't think i could do uh what do they call it when solitary confinement for no two i weeks. would absolutely love that put, you would put, just yeah you could be alone for two weeks straight there's no fucking way ma'am i'm 36 and single i've been oh, by myself for a long time you're not <laughs> by yourself you can go out to a store well, you see true. people you're in contact solitary confinement absolutely. you start to go crazy mm -hmm. give me a journal i'm, I'm good no because i'd be sleep most of the time if i don't have to do no work i would be sleep most of the time i guarantee you i've seen that's Shutter a great Island. vacation but like you don't have a book you don't have your phone you don't have anything i don't read books what mm -mm. audio books what the fuck oh God. i'm telling you pt school ruined it for me i don't like to read anymore okay if it's not well, audio i'm not gonna do it i didn't study in school so it's easy <laughs> for me <laughs> even the way i used to study so speaking of that on the pick uh, piggybacking off of that um president joe biden ever heard of them actually um, well the democrats i would say are pushing to forgive fifty thousand dollars worth of student loans for americans dropping the bucket it's a drop in my bucket listen i hey, i would appreciate it though hey, i will not say no hey democrats listen i have like i owe the government a house okay multiple multiple, hundreds multiple of thousands. tens of hundreds of thousands yes. of dollars so fifty thousand, as amazing as it is and i'm gonna take it i'm, I'm gonna actually absolutely take it but i think it should be a category that hey if you're over a hundred thousand we'll forgive 50 and if you're over two hundred thousand we're gonna forgive 175 yeah, at <laughs> least like fuck. i wish honestly truly i wish they were like hey if you give up three months of your life and you just go volunteer your time in like nicaragua or fucking harlem or the bronx or some shit and do therapy Canada. and we'll wipe away your loans i would do it i do it in a heartbeat i'm like can i can i come back to my house though like yeah like we'll put your shit on, we'll put your payments on hold yeah you have to go give three months of your time absolutely I would and do you're it. just gonna volunteer it and then when you come out we'll pay your loans i, I would 100 percent do, do it and how much the world would be such a better place yeah and you and you'd have a mate first of all I'd lose a lot of weight going to different countries because i'm a very picky eater yes mm -hmm. even though i'm fat I'm, i eat the same fats and all i need stuff, is yeah. one good stomach bug to knock my shit out go to mexico drink i the know water. i should drink the water but yeah so that's amazing yeah. i i pray I that they push that it through. that'll be good for a lot of people have you seen like um there's a bunch of negative comments sometimes when people are like, oh, perfect. Everyone gets this just when I pay my loans off. Like, why, here, who hurt you? Okay, here, here's happy. my thing. Like, I, if I were them, yes, I would be to a degree upset, but not. Okay, so that's like, for example, now we're in a, a, a pandemic, a right? Pendulce. And so even when we were in, P, I was in PT school, you were in OT school, you had to physically go to your classes, right? And these kids were just like, damn, these kids are being able to pass a lot of their tests and stuff at home and they can cheat and blah, blah, blah. Damn it, we wish we could do that. No, we don't because now they're going to be coming out stupider than us. I'm just saying. More stupider for sure. Yeah. Like, you need hands-on You need labs. Practice. Lab. Yeah. You need labs. That's where you learn everything. Exactly. If you don't have the labs, you can't apply the information. You can't just wait to get on your clinicals and say, be like, oh, well, now I'm going to learn all this stuff. No, no, no. You should already come with the foundation of a lot of different things. And the fact that you don't come with that foundation, that's very detrimental to your, you know, to your career. I mean, even I have a student now where you know pharmacology they just went through it online and i'm like no you got to be able to take that test and be able to you know maneuver through it but um but yeah people who are jealous about already you be thankful that you had the ability to pay that shit off listen i will never as much as i talk shit about my loans i feel like i'm very blessed to be able to have a profession now that i still appreciate and that i was able to get the degree yeah and that i was able to get loans mm -hmm. right because i knew i'd be able to pay them back and i will eventually pay them back i wouldn't say that because i never had the intentions on paying them back they were like oh you know you have to pay this back right in what my you mean brain you never had the intention of paying them back well, you, you knew i didn't happen you knew i didn't have the money to pay for school so if i don't have the money to pay for school and pt is not paying crazy six figures to be able to afford to pay these back why would you that was a bad investment on you sally Mae. i don't know why you thought that that was smart and but that's hood economics you, so that's, you, what, that's what you're gonna get a piece but you for. gave a 19 18 and 19 year olds thirty thousand dollars and you gave us back the the cash checks what, what did you think was gonna happen sally Mae? they knew what was gonna happen yeah now and now we had to wait for you know daddy joe biden to come and forget it 
I mean, Sally Mae, you got you, if you got all this money to lend out, you good, girl. As long as I owe you, you ain't gonna never go broke. <laughs> I'm just saying. I'm just like, what happened to we were so cl- close to public loan forgiveness, and then the hospital fucked it up. Yeah, these damn hospitals. Healthcare sucks, man. Healthcare like you're telling sucks. me, it just happened to be 51 percent of the hospital that went private, so I can no longer get public student loan forgiveness. Yep, every hospital is like for profit at this point because nobody pays their bills <laughs> nobody can afford health care that's what i was saying the other day we got those messages that the hospital was in surge they wanted us to go see people in the er we had 27 I people said, in listen, the er the insurance isn't being charged till you're fucking up here in a room Thank why do you. i need to go see the people down there and then the insurance is like nah we ain't paying for it <laughs> it's like how do insurances get to not pay for this crap like this is why know. we're in the deficit that we are in insurances you ought to be ashamed of yourself you bastards did you see that tiktok going around about um it was like tell me one thing like as an american you were groomed to believe or something mm-hmm. and then you whatever this girl's living in paris and she said she was hit by a car i guess she was biking or walking or something oh jesus it sounds like very familiar i know Whew. Alyssa and, Fowler uh, got hit by a car. it happens to the best of us <laughs> and i guess she got hit by the car all these people came to help someone brought her yeah. like ice from a restaurant someone tried to get her in a chair and they said Let, the guy got out of the car and called the ambulance mm-hmm. and this girl's like no, no 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 don't call the ambulance i don't have money for it don't worry about it i'm fine god damn and they were all like what are you talking about she's like it's, it's gonna be like thousands of dollars yeah. please like i am okay and he was like it's seven years euro for an ambulance for an ambulance i'm moving to paris i've already been there once and I'm go- she I'm was moving. like what and she was like i'm about to call that shit when i'm hung over when i fucking Heck scrape yeah. my knee i need an uber <laughs> yeah literally i was like that's fucking insane well even too there was this one video that was going around where people in different countries um were asking about what do you think it costs to have a baby in america and they were like two hundred dollars maybe uh, five thousand dollars yeah and they, when they found out how much it cost to have a baby in the united states they were like what like what does their maternity leave look like what what is maternity leave when does your uterus shrink back thank it, that's when you got to come back to work. research has shown that it actually takes a, a woman a year to recover from childbirth but you give women six months they don't have major abdominal surgery for those who have gone through a c-section even for women who have had a vaginal uh vaginal delivery you might as well say that surgery you just pushed a watermelon out your vagina and you got you gonna six tell weeks. somebody six weeks and we put the clock on it as soon as oh you take oh my god Fucked up, it's dude. Insane. i hate this country yeah it, i'm gonna go horrible. have my kids across the pond canada at least yeah they got midwives i'll do midwives yeah it's I, I like midwives more than obese honestly i really do only because i used to work with a lot of midwives mm-hmm. and midwives are just amazing even doulas they, i oh want to be a doula are you kidding i just want to really? like t- i want to be like your pal for this journey yeah. let's learn how to set a vibe what's your plan let's make it happen i'm a calm presence let's fucking push this baby out i would absolutely love if erica baidu was my doula You'd smell like her. It, she would just burn the candles that smell like her vagina. I'm cool with that. <laughs> I just love Erica Badu. I love her vibe. I love everything about her. Can her you imagine fashion, her, her like, hair, everything. Lo fi singing in, in the room while Heck you're having yeah. a baby. That'd be Little awesome. Little baby coming to this world. Brown, 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 brown. Your hair is curled. <laughs> <laughs> I would die. Lights low, no screaming, I would patchouli burning. Love that. Candles burning. Blazing. Erica Badu is probably the best doula in the world. Oh my Damn. gosh, I would love her. Anyway, but yeah, so um, we went on a rant about that. But anyway, mm-hmm. so did you hear about uh, Jeff Bezos? <laughs> Jeff the, Bezos, the no CEO cap. of Amazon, the billionaire. No mo, the C no mo. Yeah, well, he stepped. Well, it was amazing the timing that. So he stepped. He decided to step down um as the ceo of amazon but he is remaining on the board obviously because he's not Typical. giving up his billions i wouldn't either but then the very next day they came out with this huge lawsuit that amazon had been keeping 62 million dollars oh, worth of tips, tips. Isn't that from people insane yeah because you can leave your person a tip but i think you have to do it through the app and so they are not getting this is why even when i go to restaurants i hate leaving a tip on the receipt and i always try my best to bring cash because i'm like you're not going to go back on my car and i don't know if it's actually going to the waiter or waitress so i always yeah, try to do it's cash tip share, right? yeah exactly so i'm like those people aren't really getting those tips I, like i hate that but yeah so jeff um jeff bezos is no longer going to be he's stepping down as a ceo or has stepped down as a ceo um and so yeah there's this lawsuit for 62 million dollars uh lawsuit wise did you hear about all the shit with kim and kanye no so okay remember all that shit broke about their divorce like yeah. this it was just all of a sudden mm-hmm. it was everywhere there's rumors 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 well apparently 
everyone thinks now this was like big Chris Jenner energy because he now has this lawsuit filed against him from Sunday service. A bunch of hairdressers and makeup artists are, that's Oh like yeah. 30, they paid yeah, stuff. There's like a yeah. $30 million lawsuit okay. in California. If you are divorced before any kind of lawsuit like that is filed, then technically they can't go after joint Ooh. Um, property. Divo- divorce and like Kim. That. Do it. So everyone's saying like, this like specifically the divorce and all yeah. of the se- like they wanted to prove that they were separated or thinking about a divorce before right. all of this started so that way if his money goes to shit it won't touch any of hers listen chris jenner for president i I'm, mean come the fuck on people talk a lot of shit about chris jenner but that bitch is smart she, she knew was what she mar- had to do she was married to a lawyer and i secretly think she went to law school i'm just saying <laughs> or she, she read his books yes or something. she she he's reincarnated in her or something because this bitch has a brain for business like you, you, you look at her like okay so bruce, bruce jenner we're just saying when they were married we're, we know that he's caitlin she's caitlin now but bruce jenner at the time when they were married bruce jenner was going around the world as an olympian giving speeches and oh motivational speaking how much money you make off motivational speaking chris jenner was doing some shit and was like hey kim i need you to take one for the team Okay, you get put out the sex tape. We're gonna get bill, millions of dollars. I can guarantee you. Oh yeah, her, Boom. her sex tape, Courtney's fucking naked pictures. Yeah, Chris is like, listen, your boobs are already gonna be out there. Take control of your boobs and your Chris vagina. Chris realized that her capital was like the people she knew. And She's her stepping out of quote doors. unquote fame. Yeah, right. And she just like I birthed all these fucking people who have famous ass friends and around famous yep. people, and we can fucking get there. And, and we're, we're famous gonna, for nothing. We're Show gonna your find tits. a way. She, they made millions of dollars from yeah. literally literally nothing nothing. showing your tits that's it they were friends with the right people Mm -hmm. their dad was low-key famous for being hated by the fucking world for representing oj it's very true but he was loved by a lot of people though that's true (laughs) 50 50 on that one but i'm just like you can't get mad at people for getting famous for doing nothing because they're making money off of fucking nothing yeah or what you think is nothing that bitch is behind the scenes of everything and she was able to capitalize on a lot of different things in the time frame that she did it because even it was like when kim kardashian came out or was really famous it was kind of around the, the time that paris hilton was kind of dying down a little bit like her and nicole richie were dying down and they were like no longer friends and all of a sudden oh sex tape and it was like oh my god everything about kim kardashian everything so is just at the right fucking moments yeah. with these people very true even the fucking jordan woods shit and how very that true. got spinned around yeah and like every fucking thing with these people yeah it's amazing so shout out to chris jenner keep doing what you're doing girl <laughs> yeah but everyone thinks now that's why all the kanye kim yeah. shit came out and that's why she's off on this island not talking to anybody Listen, i don't blame her protect your money girl because this man is he's unstable he's not taking his meds do what you got to do you got five kids four kids five how many More, they got uh two girls and two boys four four kids four yeah. kids they got a, they had a whole trap it's fine north saint chicago so i'm four yeah so um also in the news uh, recently lebron james um, lebron james lebron james who gets tired of that came under fire because um there was a heckler that was actually in the stands um and the person the, the lady and her husband got ejected um, you can't heckle during a pandemic well not even that the i think people fail to realize that sports is fun right it's amazing it's a time for people to come together be apart blah 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 whatever and it's in this fun amazing atmosphere but these athletes are professional athletes like i didn't even realize the games were open again i didn't realize they were either i was looking for the people on the, the little zoom screens but yeah so they're letting people back in but this particular couple they were on the the you know level floor or whatever um what do they call that the court court side court side they were court side and we love sports what is it called know, right? the seats next to the court what's it called when you bounce that ball up and down when you pay oh. over twelve thousand dollars for a ski exactly so ap- apparently this lady alleged that lebron just all of a sudden out of the blue you know screamed some obscenities to her husband and she was taken up for her husband and so she just started shouting and cursing back at him Sir, he's at work her he's, ma'am he's at work he is at work i don't care if you don't like lebron i don't care if you don't like what he's doing you cannot shout obscenities to these professional players what if you what if they were you were able to watch surgeries would you do that to a surgeon now we're not comparing playing basketball to surgery can you imagine when he makes a cut and you're like boo wrong cut exactly oh my god he's bleeding what the hell are you doing like you deserve to get your ass thrown out like he's gonna regret that tomorrow yeah like you you should have got your you and your husband should have got your asses thrown out if you wouldn't say it to me in the streets don't yell it to me on the court 
Right. And so she made this whole I video about it. I heckle from fucking 600 rows up where my broke ass can sit, which is a very different situation yeah. than heckling down where people can hear you. Because here's my thing. You heckling, that's not bringing you any money. No. So why are you doing it? It's Great not bringing question. you any money. Like, it makes no sense. So, yeah. they. She, where were they playing? You know who they were playing uh, against? It was the Lakers versus... Um, were they in LA? The Hawks. It was the Hawks. What what team is that? Atlanta Hawks. Atlanta Hawks. Yes. Yes, the Atlanta Hawks. That's right. Yeah, they were playing it. They were playing in Atlanta. And the lady was like screaming these obscenities. And I'm just like, ma'am, sit down. Why people in Georgia be wild? Well, you know. Well, they turned blue this year. Maybe she wasn't excited. Hey, about hey. It. she's had a lot of pent up things. Oh, she's very she took it out on LeBron. Um, also too, Nike unveiled their Go Fly Ease um sneaker, which is inspired by um or they designed it because a, a young man with cerebral palsy was having a hard time putting his shoes on and he loved Nike shoes. And so he wrote them and was like, Hey, why don't you guys design hey, a shoe? Adaptive. Let's get an adaptive shoe where basically you can stick your foot in the shoe without any laces. And I'm going to just tell you as an obese person, I love that because I'm wearing out some of my laces cause I keep them tied and I just try to stuff my foot in there and just pull the back of them up. Let me tell you as an occupational therapist, I fucking stand for this shoe. Yeah. Are you kidding? I'm getting them. I love it because you know what everyone had like everyone who needs adaptive shoes they have yeah. the ones that like it looks like a normal shoe but there's a zipper up kind of where the toe is and the yeah. whole flap comes off and then oh. you zip it back up and it just kind of looks cheesy what about in the velcros too i don't like the velcros velcro works good but it's really for kids or yeah. for like elderly. food service or elderly people yeah. but this is like a fly ass shoe mm-hmm. that is adaptive and can help a lot of fucking people yeah everyone who's had some kind of amputation or who has horrible arthritis yeah or who has cp, CP mm-hmm. or who just can't type muscular shoes. sclerosis as well yeah. you can't know. pass midline yeah or fine motor skills absolutely just doesn't want to fucking get down there and tie their shoes obese people yeah that's all i'm saying thank you nike vertigo for being inclusive. people who can't yes. god i love a fucking adaptive they, shoe and, and nike even came out last summer was it last summer or like the fall with shoes for healthcare workers and nurses really they weren't that cute though uh, sorry nike <laughs> if you want to sponsor us you can definitely give us the new ones but they um yeah they weren't that that cute uh, the color i don't like i didn't like the color schemes what was but the, they were supposed to the be shoes? um it was like uh, one was like a blue like a sky blue um i you know i like bright shoes like I, those hoka shoes yeah they just look like a bunch of brooks i was like huh. Oh. oh people do love books books though brooks Brooks. <laughs> yeah i don't i don't like brooks but anyway um also too in the news uh did you see a little uzi vert oh god i don't even want to talk about this but we got to these shoes aren't cute you're right they look like space shoes exactly um, see told you little uzi so uh, so, for, so for those that don't know little uzi vert is a rapper and he got a 24 million dollar or an alleged 24 million dollar pink diamond um Fuck, but, it looks like someone just like bah! it looks like thanos like what's the guy's name um the guy from iron man who is uh He's like Tony Stark's um, person. Oh, not Vision, but... Um, I can't remember his name, but he came into a real robot. body. Yes. Is it Vision? Are you talking about Vision? I, I don't know his name, but he, he like, has the red face. Yeah, that's And he him. had the stone in the middle of his head. That's literally what Uzi Vert looks like. And I'm like... It, that doesn't look safe, and it also looks painful. It does look painful, because I'm like, you chose to put a $24 million diamond in the middle of your head, and somebody going to knock the shit out of you and take it out your head. But what, uh, oh my, uh, uh, uh. what happens if someone, like, obviously it's in his head. Like, it's embedded. What if you hit your head? Yes, but, like, what if someone pulls on it? That's what I'm saying. How is it stuck in there? Does anyone know? I don't know. Is this real? It is real. I How don't know, get, though. Who did this? Some idiot. It looks like his third eye. It looks like a little vagine on his forehead. I think I think you're you're asking to be robbed and killed. I mean, remember when they fucking whopped Kim's ass for her rings and shit? Thank you. And now you got easy access. Somebody can just punch you in the face and your ring fall out. Dude, or chop your whole head stupid. off cartel style. Here, here's my thing, sir. The diamond is alleged, allegedly worth $24 million. Why are you wasting money putting it in your head? Put it on a bracelet, a why necklace, a fucking key fob. Why didn't you liquidate the diamond, right? And put the cash somewhere in your savings, invest, Too much buy sense. some land, Instead, you, I, mean, I mean, he got tattoos on his face, so I guess that's asking for My too thing much. is, you you do this to show people you have money, correct? I'm assuming that's the only reason you put something guess. worth multi-millions of dollars in your head. I guess. What other multi-millionaire do you know puts fucking jewelry in their body But like see, this is, why, this is the difference between being rich and wealthy. 
wealthy people don't have to tell you that they're wealthy. Mm. Rich people have to show you that they're that they're rich because their money don't make money. Only the wealth. Look at uh, Jeff Bezos. You think this man walking around with a Gucci belt with his <laughs> with his shirt tucked in his pants? No, this man probably got a five dollar oh, Walmart you know wallet. July thirty first. He's a Leo. Mm, Who? He's showing off and showing out. Uzi Vert. Oh yeah. I'm sorry, Samir Basil Woods. What? Basil Woods. Uh uh-uh. Little Uzi Vert. Little Uzi Vert. That's, Uzi Vert. Uh, that's just stupid. I'm sorry. That's just dumb. Like you, you wasting money. You could have paid off my student loans. You selfish bastard. <laughs> he's only five four. This he's makes super, a lot. Of he's sense. super short. He's super. A lot short. of things are coming clear right now. Okay. Yeah that is insane to me who i want to know the surgical process of sticking a diamond in your head i just think that's stupid also horrible placement i feel like there's a lot of things we could have done that would be kind of cute maybe yeah like maybe a white diamond i feel like pink on dark brown skin maybe not the best don't put diamonds in your face here's the thing remember diamonds when, on my um, neck diamonds <laughs> in my grill remember when monica um, back in the day it was very popular for people like women to put diamonds like glue them on your teeth dude i Remember saw the, that i saw this girl do that the other day on tiktok and i was like where did this go yeah it was because they kept falling out that's true she then, she had like lash glue yeah and shit but i was like damn that takes a lot of time see i'm from florida in florida south florida specifically fort lauderdale People wore gr- like I don't even think we called them grills. It was golds. Like Rob, you had gold store told them, but it wasn't a grill. grill. You literally had <laughs> golds in your mouth, <laughs> and they weren't like a cap where you could take out. They were like permanent golds. Oh really? Yeah. Grill. Everybody walked around with golds. I don't know if you know this about me. I didn't know. I fucking love a grill. Love a grill, specifically a bottom grill. Mm, I'll pass. Woo! Because my friends had them like in oh, middle school. True. I mean, they've had them in middle school, high school. Everybody walking around with a grill, just woo, grill. And I'm just like, can you not? Can you not? You're gonna a have to get a job. Top one day. diamond and the bottom roll is gold. Okay, Paul Wall, I can't with you. <sighs> so, um, last thing we we're gonna talk about in topics before we get to some other stuff. Um, the first thing we're gonna talk about before we talk about the other stuff is we're gonna talk about this stuff, and this stuff is. I hate you. <laughs> All right, let's just take a quick break, and we'll be right back. This episode of The Face Off with Fleming and Fowler is sponsored by MyApothecary.com. MyApothecary is the premier online destination for hemp-derived CBD that will help you curate a wealthy lifestyle. CBD is one of many restorative compounds found in the cannabis plant. Its benefits include decreased pain, improved mood, decreased anxiety, and much more. Some of y'all know that I have crazy ADHD, so I'm heavily medicated at all times, and I've been taking CBD oil at night to kind of calm me down, get me ready for bed. 1010 would recommend. Worried about regulations? The passing of the 2018 Farm Bill made hemp-derived CBD legal to sell and consume. So yes, CBD is 100% legal and perfect for every person of legal age. My Apothecary's featured line, Broad Bloom, offers broad-spectrum CBD oil drops, sports cream, and soft gels. These products have no THC, so you can stay fly without the high or zen without the spin. Shop now at www.myapothecary.com and sign up for their newsletter to get exclusive offers, product releases, and CBD news. Remember to always check with your healthcare provider before consuming any supplement. You must be 21 to purchase and consume, and shipping is only available in the U.S. of A. Don't forget to shop at www.myapothecary.com. So in the news, <laughs> this young lady in social media news, this young lady, um, I guess people were asking her like why her slick back ponytail was like so immaculate and like does she do it every day? <laughs> and like it just never moved. Like her head seemed very stiff. And she was like, Listen, I use gorilla glue. And there's and I think I don't know if she realized that gorilla glue was actual real glue. Or if she thought Gorilla Glue meant Gorilla Snot, because Gorilla Snot is the gel, is the hair gel. But she literally used Gorilla Glue spray on adhesive. Oh my! On her head, so she literally demonstrated in the in the video. She was like, it's like she was patting it, was just like, and then she was like, she tried to wash her hair. Oh, I saw that. She was like, shampoo. It doesn't go anywhere. Yes, and then she, so she finally went to the hospital. Or people, a lot of people on social media were trying to give her ideas of what to do and how to take out the glue out of her hair um she finally went to the emergency room yeah, what and the they, fuck do you do vinegar or alcohol or something i don't know she gonna have to just shave her head off or just wait until i don't know wait till it grows out but how do you glue is strong it is really strong 
Ooh. I just, see, this is this is this is why I have this, and Black History Month too. And Black History Month, ma'am. This is why I have locked my hair because the standards of beauty in this too society high. has made you feel like you should put Gorilla Glue in your damn hair. She looked. It looked laid though. It was, it laid, was laid, but it was laid for a long time. It was laid for eternity, <laughs> ma'am. You gonna have to just go That's bald. That's fucking dedication to a style. Yeah, she's gonna have to go bald. I mean, it looks good. Cute. Tiffany Hatch is bald now. But my thing is, where did you get? See, I feel like you kind of did that on purpose. Where did you get the Gorilla Glue from? I haven't. Seen That's not in the glue hair section. It is not. It's not in the Unless hair section. She told someone. She probably told her boyfriend, "Go get me some Gorilla Glue for my hair." Oh my god! And he I said, can't. "Got you, babe. I got you." Yeah, he got you. All right, bitch. He got you bald. Cause yeah, so she went to dude, the hospital. I would fucking have a panic attack. I would just. And my hair long as shit, dude. Uh. Uh-uh. I would no. read. I would read the directions. That's what I would do black people cutting your hair if you're black is no fucking joke because that shit's it's a big thing back, yeah because yeah, you know white people y'all hair be chop. will grow super fast you'll cut it on monday and it's back to the same length on saturday black people our hair don't grow like that no it I takes mean, a long time for a curl pattern to form yes it does and if you i mean heat damage i don't know of no white people who got heat damage is that a thing for white people it is it doesn't look great oh what does it look like just frizzy or something yeah, like awful dead frizz, but then guess what? They cut it off and it grows back in six months. Exactly. Man, we, we can't afford to be losing no inches like that as African Americans. Mm-hmm. Especially when you glue that shit to your whole ass scalp. She really, and then she had the nerve to put a part in it. I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> your scalp is done, baby. Your scalp is done. So, um, as Kiki Palmer would say, um, I'm sorry to that woman. <laughs> Did you see the meme? And it's like that lady with the Gorilla Glue wig in 10 years. And it's still this late ass fucking ponytail. Oh, my gosh. There was some video oh. where the girl, I guess, was trying to comb it out. But I'm like, don't even try to comb that. Your, your whole scalp going to fall off. Just rock You it. just need to get a scalp transplant because... Oh, so a scalper. everybody go ahead and make sure you read the directions. Read yeah. what you're go putting in your hair. Send some prayers out. Yeah, I, the oh, hair gods. God, that is horrible. I mean, oh, geez, that's like when people bleach their hair and try to color their hair, and they do a perm and a bleach or something, and oh, all their hair just falls, just falls out. out. I'm like, just stop doing that, people. Pay the professional. Stop doing that. Yeah, I would never. Yeah, I'm so nervous. All right, you ready to go to the rehab? Do you want to go to the rehab corner first? Or you want to talk about some movies that we need to see? Let's. Okay, we have to talk about Mouth Memory. Ooh. So I've been waiting on Mouth Memory for a long time. Really? Why? Love Zendaya, John David Washington, hottest motherfucker on the planet. Amazing. So I was like, this is going to be good. This is one of our first like true COVID quarantine movies where they were like, we got to do something and we don't know what yeah. to do. So let's just stick these two actors in a house for two weeks and fucking make some movie magic. Yeah. The most toxic and fucking. Oh my God. Like edge of my seat. Couldn't stop watching shit. I've seen it in a long time. I was the whole time I was watching the movie. I was just like, can y'all just break up? Just slap him, slap her, just walk the fuck out the house. Like, this is stupid. The whole time I was like, but what is the story? But how did this start? But how did they get together? But what the yeah. fuck is going on? That was the most Y'all. toxic relationship ever. This is why a lot of people are saying I loved it. Oh, it was so good. The acting in it was amazing. John David, to me, that was John David's movie. Zendaya yeah. did great too, but I'm sorry, baby. John David took over that movie. And he sounded like his daddy too. For those that don't know, John David Washington is the son of Denzel Washington, and he sounds exactly like his father, but he looks like his mother, yeah. <laughs> which is funny. But he played the the best version of I am a like above average black man who thinks I'm the shit yeah. and is educated mm-hmm. and has all these things going for me. And but no is a one, narcissist. But is a narcissist. <laughs> no one will understand me. Everyone's against me, yeah. but I can back it up. Here's what I'm talking about, but actually doesn't know fucking shit. Yeah. Men. He was a man. And Their the relationship was, was so codependent. Like the more they kept exposing about each other. And I'm like, damn, that's not how you're supposed to argue in a relationship. Mm-mm. You don't argue to tear each other down. Like, Oh, so you want to know what my film was about? It was about Kiki that I used to bang in college. And then Teresa that I used to, she used to give me head on Saturday. I was like, I, I know oh, dude. And she was like, you, you wouldn't even have that movie without me. That whole movie was about literally you're mediocre. And blah, blah. I was like, the God thing God is, they would fight, right? They'd have like one little argument where one of them basically was like, you ain't shit and i'm gonna tell you how (laughs) and one of the one of the little things they would say in that argument like they'd go off and it'd settle and then someone would pick up on that one thing in two minutes and be like okay you know you said that and here we fucking go it was so realistic at two o'clock in the morning you done made some box craft mac and cheese what the (laughs) hell 
I mean, he was gobbling that mac and cheese like like his mama had made it. But I'm just you could just see it from both of their points of view yeah. so well because to him he was like, I'm trying to have a good night, and I came home to celebrate with you, and you yeah. fucked it up. And to her, she was like, I had a shit time out, and you made me feel like shit, and I still yeah. came home and made you dinner, and you still made me feel like this. But you know, what? I feel like personally, I feel like women do stuff. We, I will, I will put myself in that category. We as women, we have this unrealistic expectation that men are supposed to be psychics you just should know that i'm not in a good mood and when i tell you i'm not in a good mood or I, like i'm gonna lie to you and say i'm fine but you need to still keep pressuring me about it because i'm not fine like what the fuck do you want girl you can't even make up your mind of what you want to eat we as women we do that so many times but i think also two men sometimes are very unemo like emotionally unavailable and you don't think about stuff like that. Like even the fact that she's like, I do your laundry. I make your dinner. I clean up. All I want you to do is say thank you. You know, but yeah. I, it's it. That was the most toxic hour and 46 minutes I had ever spent in my life on my couch. I know. Loved it. 10, 10. Oh my God. So I, good. As soon as the movie was over, I was like, bitch, I hope they break up. <laughs> <laughs> and these she, are fictional oh, people. He is so hot. She is so beautiful. What a fucking couple. The directing was amazing in that movie. The way it was shot, literally. Just All like, in black and white. I would have loved to see what Zendaya's actual dress looked like. Cause I, oh, I felt, probably felt it was a, a very like beautiful, shiny dress, but um, yeah, it was, it was a great cinematic, uh, for, movie yeah, and, for being an hour and whatever of just them black yeah. and white in a house together no one else nothing else like 10 10 yeah they, they a lot both of people wouldn't be able movie. to carry exactly no one else would have been able to carry that movie yeah because even when carrie washington did that with american son like the, the the fact that the camera was zoomed in on her face the entire time and it was like she just did just this exhaustive monologue and it was like how like that's how you know you can act your ass off yeah. that you can carry a movie with you and one other person just i mean pound for pound it was insane yeah, yeah the movie was good but it was toxic as fuck God oh yeah damn. it definitely like it hit some it hit some nerves with a lot of people oh yeah especially relation but i think that's a good dialogue for relationships to have though to be able to talk about what you really feel because so many people are trying to spare each other's feelings and i'm like i'm not saying tell me how you feel to try to break me but if if what if the if your truth breaks me i'm okay with that because at least it's the truth but don't do it sarcastically like your mom was a bald-headed bitch you stink ass <laughs> home like what the f like don't do that now yeah. but express yourself and i think if more people were honest and that authentic in relationships you'd have a lot more people playing less games well i love how like i don't know fast forward if you haven't watched it but when they're arguing right they're so super pissed off and then she's sitting at the table like what the fuck and he's like the review came out and then they yeah. just they shift because they're both like obviously we're gonna we're not going anywhere fucking we fucking love each other <laughs> and she's like uh, they both have to read the review where the phone marie where the phone <laughs> hey hey malcolm malcolm your phone's right here god damn it where did i put my key where did i put my wallet, That's what my I'm wallet? it was just such a fucking realistic <laughs> like uh demonstration yeah. of relationships so of toxic relationships of toxic Good relationships God Almighty. could you imagine if they had a kid oh lord no it, that, no kids fix things they should have one no they make the kids make things worse 10 times worse because then you stay in a relationship because you well you gotta stay for the kids fuck them kids y'all you gonna fuck up your kids staying together <laughs> like I, I never understand for the life of me maybe because i'm not in it and i pray i never have to experience it you should never stay together because you have a child with somebody that is the most toxic situation to ever put your child through yeah but i think a lot of people especially if people that don't have families that stuck together blame a lot of their the things that have happened to them on the fact yeah. that their family didn't stick together so they're like listen if i have to be miserable to stick together with this person to make sure my kid doesn't have the experience that i had because my family wasn't together Shit. then i'll just fucking do it fuck them kids because i guess i don't know if you're a good parent i would assume that you just put your child needs over your own right yeah so you're just like i'll fucking but i'm miserable think, but i think too people have this misconception that because you grew up in a two-parent household that somehow that you are protected from going through bullshit like my parents were married almost 40 years that, like when i watch their relationship and this is no disrespect to my parents the shit that my mother put up with with my dad i would never personally put up with and that's probably because i'm more like my dad than my mom <laughs> anyway so i like even the way that she responds my mom is a very passive aggressive person very passive aggressive and 
even when my dad would say certain things, like I've never seen my parents argue in all the years that I've been alive. I've never personally seen my parents argue. My dad would be going off and better. You know what my mama do? Shut the fuck up. And then later on, she would go into the room. They would have whatever conversation. And my daddy calmed his ass right down. I've never personally, as a grown ass adult, I've never seen my parents argue, but that doesn't mean that their relationship was perfect. And when we saw certain things that they're like, we could tell if they weren't, you know, talking or communicating because every day that my dad left or, or, um, when he would come home from work, they would kiss each other. Even if he was going to like Bible study or church before he left the house, he would, they would kiss on the lips. And then someday he'll be like, all right, I'm gone. Oh, you ain't, you ain't gonna kiss my mama you ain't gonna kiss my oh no okay and then when they would kiss again you're like oh, okay they're getting along now so i mean people yeah. have this misconception that because you grew up in a two-parent household that everything is fine and it's uh-huh. like it's not no most of my friends that have parents that are still married to their other parents yeah they're some of the most up pe- fucked up people yes. in love because i'm yes. like oh you have a very unrealistic expectation yep i'm like you're you're one of the families that made it that's okay come here yeah let me show you what it's like over here with everyone else whose parents are divorced and separated or never married. yeah because even people who like friends of mine that i have that their parents you know were together as long as they were in the house and then as soon as all the kids are out of the house and they're stop moving your mic i'm sorry um soon as as they have as soon as they get out of the house and all the kids are grown their parents divorce and it's like why did y'all wait all these years of divorce well we were just trying to stay together for y'all what the fuck Dude, did you see? I keep talking about fucking TikTok, but that's because it's the only fucking form of entertainment I have right yeah, now. TikTok is but awesome. uh, this girl was like, so when I was growing up, my mom loved to garden. She was always in the garden. Da, yeah. da, da, da. And then I went away to college. My parents got divorced and my mom has never gardened a day in her fucking life since. She was like, my mom was just gardening to be she away escaped. from my dad. Absolutely. To get on the garden. Yep. That's why men cut grass all the time. You think men like cutting <laughs> grass? Show me one person in this whole world that likes cutting grass. Nobody. Mm-mm. They do that shit because they need peace and quiet peace and quiet that's what my mama read all the time i really my mom used to be sitting at the kitchen table reading the bible ma'am i know you love jesus and i do too but goddamn and my dad to be in the room sleep or watching tv the tv watching him you need a break from your spouse like you just do but um but yeah that that movie was oh shit it was toxic good god almighty did you see sylvie's love no i saw the commercial the commercial the preview trailer or whatever but i haven't watched it yet. it was toxic too but it was it was a really good movie it was a really good it, i mean I'll great watch anything acting. with tessa thompson are you kidding tessa thompson beautiful gorgeous amazing actress <laughs> even the um i can't i can't pronounce his name but the 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 young man that played um opposite of her is actually carrie washington's husband mm. and um it was a Married really good to movie. olivia pope huh yes it was very it was a very good movie so i I definitely encourage everybody watch Malcolm and Marie watch Sylvie's love. We're all about really black films right now for black history. Month. Didn't you finish? The, did you finish the wild? I did finish the wild. Talk about a mind bender at the end. Listen, I hate shows like that. Dude, when she walks into that room at the end and sees what she sees on the computer screen and yes. she goes, what the she's hell? Like, what the fu-? She looks in the camera. She It's like she breaks the third wall and she's like, Cause I had the, you know what, Leah? I had the same thought yeah she was crazy. not crazy she she's, was not crazy she's not crazy everybody thinks you Leah's know what crazy. all this all that show taught me is when you think you're crazy you're onto something you really do and fucking ride the wave yep just because everybody else thinks you are crazy you yeah. are the most you sane be a person. sheep or a wolf exactly a wolf see friday showed that <laughs> <laughs> oh. all right we were to go into the rehab corner let's or anything else. on over they tried to make me go to rehab i, I said go 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 hey Yes, I've been bad, but when I come back, you'll go, go, go. Get your ass in that corner. Hey, welcome to the rehab corner, everybody. All right, so what are we talking about in the rehab corner today? Um, let's talk about how your day can be fucked up before it even begins. <laughs> I'll go first. Tell me about a time your day was fucked up before you even started. I'll go first. Oh, gosh. Y'all, schedulers have the single-handedly the power to make or break your fucking life. Oh, yes, they do. Dude, sometimes you're in the same unit all week. Yeah. Thotting and bopping, you got that shit down, and you come in one day, and you're in six different units. You never heard of half of them. Mm-hmm. You don't know what the fuck is going on in the other three. It's, yeah. I looked for an hour and a half for an er 
because I our see. hospital <laughs> in the midst of this pandemic has yeah. been like shit there's no room for all these people in er let's open up three new ones and we'll just shut people in there yeah. well there's no fucking hospital app there is no, no. electronic map anywhere i and, don't know where the fuck and there's no number in front of the unit so you're yeah, like exactly tick you or something you're like what floor is that even on like can you at least tell me what floor it's on so maybe i can find it yeah so naturally i go up to the floor that i'm on for the day all of the people i need to see are at least on the that floor yeah. or maybe one other this motherfucker i had two different er's i've never heard of look and i asked multiple people i probably asked like five people no yeah. one knows where the fuck that shit is ask doctors nurses literally i <laughs> no what? one and i was just like god damn it it's been half my time walking around the hospital yeah you definitely got your steps in on friday i did i was just like just... and i couldn't help you because i had never heard of these places either i barely go to the er because i don't know where it is no because who needs to be treated in the er seriously i'll go to urgent care i'm just like these schedulers single-handedly hold the power in their hands but even too then you had uh, you had a bunch of people on your list that weren't even like appropriate to be seen for therapy oh my god i had people on my list that had gotten tpa at 5 a.m who were intubated i re-looked at my list after an hour two of them had died i had one patient on my list that they wrote it in and i'm like they, the, the patient didn't have a room number and when i go to type his name in um it was like grayed out as if the patient had been discharged so i was like you know what this is weird like this makes no sense let me they look in the chart this early in the morning yeah, no and, Even I look, in a and i look at it i'm like wait was this a post-surgical patient was it a tavern what what's going on and literally it was like death summary what the fuck the man literally died on the toilet they called a, a cold horrible blue, place to go called a cold they took the man to the bathroom he they called uh he was on the toilet he went unresponsive and they had to literally do see him. and mind you on top the cherry on top of the cake or ice cream whatever um the man was like 430 pounds and so they had to do cpr in the bathroom Dude, intubate him in the bathroom Everyone's i don't know so, it's so small in there they I probably hope, had a head out i hope they drug him out of there but yeah he died and i told my supervisor i was like okay did you try to ruin my friday she's like what do you mean and i'm like you gave me a dead guy on my schedule what the, what the hell <laughs> do you want me to do him. with him go get him up you want me to do ankle pumps like maybe we should have got in there before he went to the bathroom but yeah the shitty thing about the hospital right now too is that they're fucking wheeling and dealing up there and the oh, yeah. they're like all right down no pulse all right <laughs> roll them on Gotta out. Get out clean this shit turn it over we got someone else coming up here absolutely they will have patients sitting at a nursing station with all they shit in a wheelchair like oh like, uh, <laughs> we, we we were waiting on a telly bed but we got you out of the yeah because our surgical patient basically patient's like out. you know at school when your mom said oh i'm gonna come pick you up at 12 for a doctor's appointment yeah. and so the teacher had to get you out of the room but your mm -hmm. parents aren't there yet so you're fucking standing there waiting you're just sitting in the office like that's what fucking patients i'm waiting like. do you have a hall pass i'm waiting on my mom <laughs> she's on her way to come pick me up <laughs> oh man. yeah I, I definitely agree it's like you you come in and you know you're trying to do you know continuity of care with your patients and trying to keep your same patients and then somebody comes in and totally messes up your schedule puts you somewhere because of whatever stupid reason and it's just like well i'm just like really? this job takes a lot of mental preparation to do yes, like it I, does. like i'm in covid next week and i have to mentally prepare to be in that unit with those patients yeah so and, and with your colleagues and, as well oh, yep. <laughs> so if i'm mentally prepared to do one thing or see a certain group of people and you put the script on me and it's not for the better necessarily Really? yeah definitely. it just takes a little bit out of me yeah because especially even, when half the people i'm supposed to see are not appropriate and the other half are in a place i've never fucking heard of before pretty much i mean friday we had a you know you come in and you're like okay i'm i'm an evaluating therapist why do i have nine treats on my list <laughs> and then my colleague has seven evals what sense does that even make make it make sense like I, like doing schedules is not rocket science but i'm not saying that it's not a difficult thing either especially with a department as big as ours but you know you, like you said coming in you have this expectation i should be in this particular area every single day and then the minute they throw you somewhere else it's just like you ruined my life yeah so i can't tell if i need to uh re-navigate my expectations or just like pitch a fucking fit that's very mature of you to re-navigate your expectations oh God, I like thank that. you because i'm just tired of fighting i'm not attica attica <laughs> <I'm kidding. laughs> listen harriet tubman took over me on friday i'm ready oh shout out to the ancestors i'm ready for a war oh ow. oh yeah ow, 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 ow. 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 Why do we always break out into the song? <laughs> it's hard not to. All right. Also, too, um, let's talk about uh some pandemic issues with our students. Um, I currently have a student now. Which just means I have a student now, too. Okay, first of all, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, 
Alyssa, for some reason, keeps thinking that my student is her student as well. I'm because, like, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, this motherfucker is like, okay, hey, we have an email together. I'm just going there with my student. I'm going to step yes. out. He's got it. So if I'm in there with the student, then I have to teach, which makes him my student. You don't have to teach. You have to treat him like he is an evaluating therapist. And you are supposed to step back and allow him. You want me to be in that room for 28 hours? Because y'all did on Friday. <laughs> y'all i've never been an eval so long in my oh life. my god Bless i was hard i'm sitting heart. here standing out there like why the, the patient has no lines why the hell are y'all still in there Tw 38 minutes later 38 and then i asked minutes. Alyssa, i'm like is it my student or is it you and she's like mm, i don't really know and she's like yeah <laughs> nah it's him it's definitely him but i mean you we have I these blacked out for a second so i didn't know yeah i mean we have we have students oh, well we only have pt students right now in our hospital they cancel all the otrs because oh uh, we ain't OT got students. staff Y'all don't have any staff, and then the staff that y'all do have are in COVID, and the students can't we go in there. We could probably use students right but, now. Um, if I could have two yeah. students, we could knock out some fucking emails. Oh, absolutely. I mean, my my student right now, I feel so bad for him because he, because of this pandemic, he was on a six week rotation and outpatient, and then his second rotation, he was in outpatient for twenty weeks. Here's what the fuck you're not about to do to me. 20 weeks. I'm not staying. First of all, I'm not staying anywhere for 20 weeks. No. Second of I all, quit you can be sh good and goddamn skippy. <laughs> sure. It's not going to be outpatient. Outpatient for 20. You kiss my ass. Like I outpatient for 20 weeks. is like a fucking never ending roller coaster that you just horrible. wish would stop. And then, and then he was so burnt out to a degree because I guess his, his previous CI just treated him like a mule and made him see like between 16 and 20 patients a day and just do all the documentation. And then he would make him stay there. I am a person where this is, the, this is the way I am as a clinical instructor. I am not going to waste your time because I hate having my time wasted. When my student is done documenting, you're going home. You're not staying there. I don't care if your school also, says, why would I want you to just stay there and stare at why me? Why are you staring at me? That's creepy. First of all, I want to talk shit with my coworkers and I want to be able to say what I need to say unprofessionally without you being there, like looking at me and gawking me and potentially recording me. So and potentially um, narking. Exactly. Cause we already think he he worked my student works for the cia we've already oh, yeah. told him that he's a fucking spy for yeah sure. he's definitely a spy and um but yeah it was i felt so bad for him i even asked him when is your where's your last rotation he's like oh it's another outpatient clinic what the why fuck, would you dude? pigeonhole the student well, I, I get think, it it's a pandemic yeah but i don't think it's there yeah I, I think the teachers unfortunately the the clinical coordinators have been very have been struggling a whole whole lot during this pandemic because they can't find placement for these students and so they're like in order to let you graduate on time let's just stick you somewhere and i'm just like it's you're doing a disservice to these students and i know yeah. it's not your fault and you're not doing it on purpose but you know even i told my student i said listen when he first started in january i said my goal is to rush you through this through this clinical and help you understand as much as you can because i don't know if they're going to shut the world down again i don't know what's going to happen with COVID, so i don't want you to get stuck where you are not learning what you need to and so i said i'm going to go very fast with you in this icu so if i'm going too fast let me know and i can slow down but otherwise I am going to throw you to the wolves. I'm never going to throw you to the wolves unprepared. I'm always going to be standing right there. If you need me, call me. Or I will Alyssa come in the room. will be there in the room with you. I mean, you're not really helping him because you're not a PT. That's not wrong. Yeah. Uh, I know some things. You do, but not as a PT. Trendelenburg. Reverse Trendelenburg. Reverse Trendelenburg. Mm -hmm. Shuffling gate. Really? Yes. Do you know what Trendelenburg gate is? Yes. That's where I was going with the first one. Oh, interesting. What's See? an antalgic gate? Oh, it's when it looks like this. Antalgic? Yeah, you saw it. What Carry on. What does the word antalgic mean? Why are you? I'm not a student. Why are you quizzing me? I don't care about gate. Painful gate. Thank you, because you're not a PT. Oh, like pain. This is why we don't care that patients are butt naked. <laughs> <laughs> I just care what their arms can do. Yeah, but so as a, as a, you being a new grad, how was it when you were a student? you know, coming into it, did you feel like you learned and that you had enough clinical experience to be able to come into as a new grad from all of your clinicals, not just from having your clinical, you know, at our particular job? Oh, fuck no. Yeah. Well, what were your clinicals? Where were, where were they I at? did an outpatient peds clinical yeah. for eight weeks. Yeah. Does that sound right? Eight and eight? No. I don't know, because y'all are different than, than ours. Three months and three months. How many weeks is that? 12? 12. Let's say 12 weeks and 12 weeks. Okay. That sounds more right. <laughs> I think I did 12 weeks each. Um, I felt like I had a good grasp, but I didn't feel like I knew shit enough to be on my own. But I yeah. think that's also just because I was a new grad. Yeah. Um, it's different. 
I think, well, his is so short because I think truly in like my last three to four weeks of my acute mm-hmm. rotation, I was like, okay, I get it now. Like I can fucking knock out these evals. Yeah. I know how to be safe. Cause you were with me a lot. Your last, I think like two or three weeks of your rotation, you were with me a lot in the ICU. Yeah. And I feel like then is when I was like, okay, I can do this. Yeah. It's okay. I kind of know I got my grips on everything, right. whatever. So I don't, eight weeks is just i feel like there's a shock of being in the icu right and that takes like three weeks to get over yes it does the speed of the icu the um complexity of the patient getting comfortable with all that shit takes a couple weeks especially with all the lines i think that's a big that's that's the hardest thing there's a lot of lines big ones and vitals to look for and sign like non-verbal signs of patients and all of that shit so i think eight weeks to be in the icu is just short like it's yeah that's why, like, usually the first, the, when I have students that are in the ICU, I take the first week as, like, an observing. So the first day, you're just going to observe. That second day, I'm giving you one patient. And when I give you one patient, like, I'm going to give you a super easy patient that's almost like a telepatient patient where you can get comfortable moving this patient without the lines. Once you get over that, then you add the lines in and it makes it a lot easier. But even like with my student, you know, I quiz him in front of, you know, patients and, you know, I tell them all the time, I'm like, listen, I'm quizzing you not to embarrass you, but I, there's no other way that I'm going to get you to understand it unless you're in the trenches with it now. So even when I'm asking him, what's the most important line on this patient right now? And he's like, oh, the swan. Sir, he has a balloon pump. <laughs> what, what is the balloon pump for? What's keeping him the most alive? Yeah, right exactly. Now? It's like if you dislodge anything on him and it will kill him immediately, what is it? And I'm telling the patient that too because I want you to be aware mm-hmm. you have an intra aortic balloon pump. This is perfusing blood to the rest of your body. And if you take it out, you're going to die. I just think things in the neck freak people out. So that's what everyone goes oh, for. Oh, yeah. It's definitely. a thing in the neck. That's what yeah. I got to say. I don't know. I feel like I fumbled with lines. That was the big one for me. It was fucking yeah. lines. I couldn't get the lines. Couldn't get the lines. The only thing that helped was my CI I had another student when mm-hmm. I was halfway through. Yeah. And so she was like, all right, teach her. Cause now you've learned. Yeah. Right. And so that was when I was like, Oh, I got it. Cause yeah. I can tell her what to do and I can see what she's doing wrong and she can fix exactly. it, which makes me know what I need to do. And yeah. that just like, after that I was sailing. See for me, when I was on clinicals, I, my very first clinical was a sniff. My second Ooh. one, I know, but it was fun. I had a great CI. Shout out to Jake. And we used to call him Jake from State Farm. Um, but he was an amazing CI. And he was like three years older than me. So I, he was very relatable. See, is that and weird? Because I always feel like I don't want a student because I don't feel old enough to have a student. Like yeah. I wouldn't trust the shit I said. You got to fake it till you make it. It's just like when you become a therapist, like when you're on your own, you got to fake it till you make it with your patients. Cause if you, if you act like you don't know anything, then they're going to act like you don't know anything. Yeah. So my first rotation was a sniff. My second rotation was uh outpatient. My third rotation was outpatient. And then my last rotation was an ARU. So I never had ICU or an inpatient, I mean, an acute care experience. Oh. And when I came out of school, but because I worked in a hospital setting for, for four years in, in undergrad, you know, that kind of helped a little bit, but then, and when I got my very first job as a PRN, the, the director was like, listen, I see a lot of potential in you. I'm throwing you to the wolves. This bitch literally shouts out to Fran. <laughs> she threw me into a cardiac ICU God and damn. their orientation for their job was a week. You got a week of orientation, bitch. This is where the towels, this is where the, the, the gloves, this is where the gowns are. And I was shadowing this one experienced therapist who had been a therapist for 15 years. And you could tell she was not happy to, to have me as a person shadowing her. Like she wasn't rude to me, but you could just tell she was forced to do it. And she's like, yeah, this is pretty much no all I do. Wants, I mean, maybe before I feel like people were more open to students, but yeah. especially now, right now in the pandemic, yeah. it's very hard to get someone to be like, hey, can someone tag along for a day with you? Yeah. I love having students. So I think having students is the best thing because you literally, like I, like I told my, my student before, or I tell my students all the time, you going through clinicals, you are the most pissed off at your professors because you feel like you have been robbed of education, but yeah. you haven't been. You are only going to learn certain things by putting your hands on it. Really with this... If y'all hear honking Is in the there background, a birthday party? I have no clue. But the, the, my neighborhood, they just be always on something extra as soon as you're trying to do something. But anyway, um, so I can't edit that out. So you might just hear this horns honking. I but feel like school, if you were going to be. He's fucking people, man. <laughs> Goddamn. <laughs> 
Like, if uh, you had to compare, it would be like going to school to be a baker and all that they taught you really was like, this is chemically what happens when you mix a cake. This is what yeah. happens in the oven when you bake a cake. Right. This is the color combinations of icing that makes sense. And you're like, okay, cool. And then you get thrown into a bakery and they're like, okay, we got to go. We have these, these cakes that are due. Yeah. This people want this. It wants right. to taste like this. And you're like, what the fuck? Exactly. And you didn't learn any of that. But when you're watching people do it in front of you and you're learning from them, you can understand the deeper workings and meanings and why things happen because yeah. you know, like, Oh, this is the chemistry behind the case. And, and you're able to pull out of like my, my uh, former director of our PT program, Dr. Eric J. Turan. You're just name dropping. This I know I, I loved him and I hated. Well, I texted him after I finished PT school, after I passed my boards, I was like, I fucking hated your guts, dude. Like you were a piece of shit anatomy teacher like god damn it because he's a neuron he has a degree in neuroanatomy like fucking nerd anyway but i told him i was like you were so hard on us for no reason but god damn it i guess i thank you whatever but um he's always say oh you know you got to put this in your suitcase put this in your suitcase so then <laughs> i'm still telling my students pull this out of your suitcase oh put a pin oh, in it you know god. stuff like that but i tell my students all the time like you know, my job as a CI is not to create you into a mini me. It is literally to help you piece together the puzzle pieces that you have. You have been in all these didactic classes and you know what these medications do. You can memorize the alls and the, the press, all these kind of different things. Right. But it's my job to help you pull out put all this critical thinking together. OK, what is this drug? What does it do? How does your patient react? Blah, blah. Fucking hell! What could possibly be going on that warrants this my, much? God <laughs> yeah, damn you, it! Uh, this isn't. What if I had a baby that was sleep? It's me. I'm looking at my asleep. security cameras. Like, what the fuck are y'all doing? Is it a baby shower? A birthday party? I mean, they still rolling down the street. Oh, they're right outside your fucking. Who door. the fuck is out here? It's someone's birthday party or baby shower. I'm sure. Well, can you hurry the fuck up? God damn it! We're recording. I'm so, calling the police. <laughs> Black woman calls police. Oh, yeah, look. They got fucking... God damn it. What is that? A car with like a bunch of stuff on the outside oh, of it. Oh, yeah. The Super Bowl is happening. Yeah, I'm telling you. They, oh, let me, is let me it tell you something. Super Bowl? If, if, if all of them are parked everywhere over here, I'm calling the police. It's a At pandemic. At least they don't have Confederate flags. That's very true. Um, Here's the thing. Oh, these fucking I idiots, just don't man. think I'm grown, responsible, or fucking mature enough to deal with a with a student i didn't like yeah. or that i hated or that annoyed me oh i definitely have that it would just show <laughs> and i know i think i'm very self-aware i know that about myself so i'm not ready for a student yeah because i'd be like listen i know the bigger purpose is you become a therapist but like i don't think you should be a therapist in these streets and yeah. i can't fucking stand you but so. i but i think that's your obligation as a therapist is to either prepare them or let whoever know who who is helping to prepare them that they're not it. I mean, I've had students where, you know, this one student I had, we didn't get along in the beginning because he wanted to go and take his dog out to walk. And I'm like, he wanted extra time to be to go on a lunch break. And I'm like, excuse the fuck out of me. Like when I was a student, I didn't miss a day of my clinical. Like professionalism was a part of your grade and yeah. is always a part of your grade. And the fact that you felt that, well, you're not understanding. My other CI let me do this. Bitch, I'm not your other CI. Your job don't give a damn about your dog. Your job don't even give a damn about your kids. You are here to for to to push for the business, and that is it. I mean, I've even had students where I'm just like, they ain't gonna make it. <laughs> I, I literally had to threaten this one student. I was like, do you talk ever? Like you don't you don't even act like you want to be here. And he and when I, I was I said I'm literally considering failing you at your midterm. And if you don't ship up what shape up if within a week ship up or shape, shape out, out buddy yeah i was like if you don't get your life together within the next week i'm failing you and he was just like i'll try <laughs> you better do something buddy because you're not gonna make it as a pt doing this but here's the problem what if they're okay as a therapist but they suck as a person and they annoy the shit out of me personally you just have to remember you're getting your work done for free fuck that I would rather just go see people on my own. Um, wait until you become a CI. <laughs> the, <laughs> the freedom to be able to shop on Amazon when you want to. Yeah, but that's when you have a good student. Not always. Okay, that was not a. <laughs> you and this exercise ball. I swear that was not a list of farting. <laughs> Trust me, when you get a student, you're gonna be happy that somebody else is doing your work and that you're training them. It's I think a totally I'm just happy mindset. at this point that they're not forcing students on anyone. I, I know I a lot of I know a lot of places that do as soon as you yeah. get a year they're like oh here's a student but see that's what I think that's that's what happens or 
When you force students onto somebody who doesn't want a student, you're going to end up doing a disservice to that student. Oh, 100%. Because you should not force a student on anybody. I think it's per personally great to give back and pay it forward because someone else gave you the privilege to be on their license and to practice on, up under their license. You should pay it forward and do the same thing. Because you as, you as a, a therapist, you want to make sure that the people that are coming behind you that may one day potentially, you know, treat you for an issue, you want to make sure that they're competent. So if you can have a hand in helping their competence, competency like to me that that's why I, that's one of the reasons why i do it you none of my children that i have raised as pts mm -hmm. you can never say that oh you were shitty you're not gonna be a sh you can't if you were a shitty therapist monica fleming didn't raise you because i was harsh on my student i'm very hard about I me mean, my student now because i'm burnt out i just told him listen you're gonna get away with a lot of shit that the rest <laughs> of my students are not he talks shit on me he i does. was like monica get your fucking kid then he'd be like listen monica i work when you work if you want to storm out let's storm the capital together this motherfucker <laughs> sat in the office i say motherfucker <laughs> endearingly and he was just like i don't even know what i said i was like yeah you could probably do my job just go in there do do my work oh, for yeah. me and he was like yeah i got it uh can you raise your arms up uh any numbness or tingling can, can you, you brush your, your teeth on? I was like, all right, fuck you. I need more than that. And this is the problem. This is it. Yeah. The student I have, he's so down to earth and he's so approachable. And I think that's why I don't have to be super harsh with him. First of all, he's punctual. He shows up on time. He, he acts like he wants to be here. And I think also too, I'm burnt out. So I'm not as harsh. I remember so also, I don't even know what the fuck he's doing half the time. But exactly. It's I remember when a student of mine used to copy and paste what I wrote on the previous patient. And I would literally delete his entire note and make him type it over again. Damn. Yeah, I was tough. I remember when my CI used to delete my note and yeah. just retype it because she was like, this is not going under mm -mm. my name. I'm not retyping it. And I'll be like, and if you don't leave on time, that's overtime for me. Go retype it. I don't do that anymore. Well, not right now because I'm burnt out, but I just don't have the energy to do it. But um, but yeah, when I first started out in teaching, I was very, because I have a high standard. I have a very high standard because I can meet that standard and you're not going to be mediocre. Now, my thing is I'm going to help you. And if you didn't get what you needed at your particular school, because we all go to different schools, even though we're supposed to know the same information, we're going to get it in very different yeah. ways. So I want to make sure that you feel comfortable doing what you're doing. And I always tell my students, do not take anything that I say personally. I don't, if you and feel she's embarrassed at them, well, don't take true. it personally. But if I, if I, if I'm talking to you or I'm quizzing you in front of us, in front of a patient, if you feel offended or if you feel some type of way, let me know because that's the way that I teach. And if you can't handle it that way, that's okay. Let me know. And then I can take you to the side and we'll stand outside the room and go over it versus going over it in the, in the front of the patients. And I think a lot of patients are very diligent to understand that we have a teach that we're at somewhat of a teaching hospital because they'll engage with the patient like, Oh, I didn't know that. So can you tell me about this? Can you tell me about that? And then you have patients that are trying to answer the quiz questions that I'm asking. Oh, that's my, my favorite. Student. Monty will be like, Hey, what's this line right here? And the patient's like art line. And I'm like, that is a full swan what? or a tortoise or something. And he's like, it's an art line, <laughs> sir. You yeah. know what the fuck's going on. And he'll be like, you yeah, got Monica's off of sedation yesterday. Exactly. He'll be like, yeah, Monica's my CI and she's quizzing me. And they're like, Oh, let me help you out. I'm like, Mr. So -and -so, Mr. Johnson, you're not supposed to help him so i oh, think it kind God. of it kind of breaks the ice a little bit as well too but one thing that i cannot stand about students is that when you get these students who think they know everything and i had a co-worker when i worked at one of the other hospitals in town he had the worst student ever i want to punch this girl in the face and she <laughs> wasn't even my damn student she had the nastiest attitude she thought she knew everything and i made this bitch cry and i did not care because he was out of town for i think a couple days and she was with me of course she used to talk to him so disrespectfully and one day we were talking and um, one of my coworkers, she's um korean and so she was like yeah you know because us orientals like she literally said the word oriental i didn't think oriental was a bad word to say oh yeah we don't say that anymore exactly Exactly. It's, Rugs are oriental. People are Asian. Exactly. So she's like, well, the, so the girl was like, well, my mom's from Thailand and you don't call people oriental. She was like, bitch, I'm calling myself oriental. Like, what the fuck? I'm Korean. And so she was like, it's so disrespectful. She was like, okay, whatever. <laughs> um, so she That's was just, weird. she was just very disrespectful. So when she was charting and on her home, on her recommendation, she wanted to put home health. Now she put on just the recommendation home health. I said, home health, what? nursing pt ot speech this bitch had the audacity to say well obviously it's pt i'm a pt student so i said i polite to tap to uh go ahead and get your stuff let's go outside come on go ahead go ahead and go ahead and log out for me so i took it to the side and i said listen i'm not sure who hurt you little baby but um one thing you will not do is you will not disrespect me like i i will fail you and i'm not even your damn ci i will call your teacher today 
And I was like, you need to learn how to fix your nasty ass attitude because you are not going to go anywhere. And this was her second clinical and she had failed her first clinical because of her professionalism. And I was like, baby, you're not going to get out of school do acting like this. And so I was like, I said, I want to take you to the side just to let you know when, when your, when your CI comes back, I suggest you do a complete 180. Cause if not, yeah. bitch, he going to fail you. And so she was sitting there crying and then because I took her outside but there were other people that were still walking by so then at the very end she was like well I just want to say that the next time you decide to take somebody to the side make sure that people aren't walking around to feel embarrassed I was like bitch fuck you goodbye <laughs> like, I'm not dealing with I you I hope you feel embarrassed I hope you do because you're I disrespectful I err on the side of I don't know what the fuck is going on that way if I happen to say something smart people are like oh she said she didn't know right which is a lot better of a feeling than saying I do know everything and then them being like that is the fucking stupidest shit I've ever heard no, i had to break her i would i would embarrass her in, on purpose in front of patients what is this no it's not you need to go study back again because you, one thing you're not going to do is have this arrogance we yeah. like you are practicing medicine and you are you literally have life and death in your hands you need to take that with a like it is a privilege for you to be able to have people's lives in your hands and for you to come up here with your, you ain't even got no license to stand on. You can't even, you you are in a diaper as a PT student. And for you to come and have this attitude and this disdainful, disgusting character about yourself as if you are owed something because you are getting a doctorate in PT. Baby, you, are doc, you have a doctorate with no clinical experience. Having that doctorate is only beneficial for your mom and daddy. You are only special to your mother and father. It's a requirement uh. for you to get in the door be humble okay this is why it's important to put kids in time out when they're little and teach Seriously. them consequences and discipline like i was just i mean i told my my coworker, i was like you need to fail her fail her <laughs> fail her i think he failed her for her midterm and he ended up passing her he was like i'm not gonna do that to anybody i don't want to repeat her like she just needs to hurry but just i don't want her to stay out. here any and longer. i was like i said see that's the problem y'all keep trying to be nice to people fail these motherfuckers yeah. fail these students if you professionalism is a part of your grade you cannot talk to people any kind of way, get away with, because people like that turn into continue to be mediocre and get in these leadership positions. Yep. And then you have shitty leadership. Yep. It's a cycle. It's a cycle. But I never, never understood the attitude because for me, I was like, whatever CIA I get, whatever they fucking do, because I was told the hospital that I now work at when mm -hmm. I was going to be a student there, we had other students who had gone there and they were like yeah they're cool but the, my ci made me cry mm -hmm. and did all of the shit so I was yeah like, fuck dude i'm not trying to cry at my clinical yeah and i was like just kiss ass whatever you gotta do just mm -hmm. fucking do it how they want it and get in and get out it's yeah. only for however many weeks because mm -hmm. that's what the fuck you're supposed to do that's what you're supposed to do you're there to learn just get in get the fuck out write it how they want to write yeah even if you have one ci one day who tells you to write it the other day and then another ci that tells yep. you to write it a different way just fucking do it how they want absolutely. and get the fuck out of there absolutely and people don't get that i guess or just i have one ci that i i was two of my other two of my other classmates went to her the year before and they were like oh my god this lady she's amazing you're gonna love her bitch <laughs> i went to this lady she was the most narcissistic condescending bullying berating and disrespectful <laughs> bitch ever i hated this like like you know how you're talking to patients and you're like well you know i'm just a student i'm, I'm a novice so i'm still learning just yeah. be patient with me but but you're just saying that to try to bring down your nervousness and anxiety and just relate to the patient right this lady chewed me out and was like you never call yourself a novice and, blah, 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 blah. and i'm like bitch i don't really mean it i was just talking to the patient but you all up in my business <laughs> then she ended up um I, one day i was late because i i was driving up i was staying with my my, my best friend's mom and grandmother um at the time because i was you know in a different city and so i was i literally drove out of the driveway found that i had a flat tire and i was like oh shit i'm gonna be late so her mom let me take her car i called the ci like 15 minutes before and i was like hey i'm running late i got a flat tire cool she knew about the shit this bitch gonna put this in my midterm talking about monica was late five minutes <laughs> but, but you ain't gonna tell my teacher that i told you i was gonna be late because i had a flat tire like what the fuck oh i hated God. this bitch so much i was so grateful i was so quiet she was like monica you don't really talk no bitch i talk a lot i just don't fucking like you and i'm and i'm paying to be here and i'm counting down these eight weeks and literally when i passed my boards i texted her the most nasty message i did not care i was like oh fuck you bitch God. i hated you you was a piece of shit i hope you'll never get another student your mama your daddy your grandpappy boom and call it a day wow yeah i hated her i was like i got my own license now bitch i don't care very nice well i'm glad that worked out for you yeah 
definitely yeah no i am also of the mindset that you just get in there do what you have to do and get the fuck just out just get out just do what they tell you to do and get that stop challenging people you it's okay to challenge your ci because i will do that on purpose i'm like oh okay so what is this what does a beta blocker do oh it controls uh it controls your oxygen saturation absolutely and then the pseudo will be like so you told me yesterday that 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 controlled oxygen and it really doesn't yes i'm aware of that the problem is were you aware of it you sound awful oh yeah I, but all, I, you know what i will say all the fucking pts do that shit because when i was a student whenever we'd co-treat with a pt student yeah. and the pt because my ci was very much like if we were in the room she would ask the questions like okay so why do you think that's happening okay yeah. but what about this so let's walk through mm -hmm. it that kind of nice shit and the pt that was had the student would be like uh look at like look at the ekg right now what's going on mm -hmm. what was their heart rate doing why was it doing that yep what medicine's pumping through the IV right now that would cause that and i would start getting anxiety because i was like that's not how we do it over but see, here that's how your board exam <laughs> is gonna be i know but i was like i don't like that that's not how yeah. i work because i start to shut down and i can't fucking do it and y'all are the same way we would have those fucking um what is it called when this i was gonna say the kids when the kids go in there and read their <laughs> papers um volunteers what Seeds? no what is it called when y'all have like an article that you go read journal club whatever oh when yeah the kids when they have to present something oh or, yeah yeah or the even project. like the student projects oh crap my student has to do one i guess i don't know Glad maybe we're... we'll see <laughs> for the ot one there it's very typical we're all yeah. super excited everyone there's not so many questions as there are compliments and or mm -hmm. like i'd like to add to that i saw yeah. this piece of research whatever you go sit in one of those pt bitches we're this just fucking ringing yeah. these kids out with questions Absolutely. okay well you said this but did it also look at this this and this well why was this group chosen mm -hmm. well did they also see this this and this in that study and i was yeah. like y'all are fucking crazy it's because you have these kids have to critically think unfortunately pt programs are outpatient based the way you learn they teach you based off if you're only going to work at outpatient yeah. and the only time you get a chance to really critically think and put it all together as opposed to just breaking up muscle groups is when you're in you know these icus or you're in you know acute care. well i would say icus honestly because icus are the only place that, we're, that you're seeing things in real time and so when i'm talking to my to my student i'm like what medications are your patients on because how do you know how to modify your treatment if you don't even know what the hell is going on with your brain? First of all, why is your patient here? What is the main? Well, they had a surgery. Why did they have the surgery? Well, they had stenosis. What the hell is stenosis? Well, it's a blockage in the artery. Okay, so why does the blockage in the artery happen? You need to piece all of that together yeah. because when you get to your boards, they're going to give you all this patient scenario of all this information and half the information that they give you in the in the patient scenario ain't even gonna be what the question actually they're gonna be like oh what's potassium what the fuck like why did you tell me about john's working as a construction worker and blah 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 but yeah. you know it really helps these kids to be able to critically think to put it all together and it's like i'm not making trying to embarrass you i'm literally trying to pull out of your suitcase all this stuff so you can piece it together and if you take offense to that you're never gonna learn yeah that ain't that ain't us over in this department because mm -mm. even even with our our one of our um intensivists that we all know and love um we won't say his name obviously but he will ask you questions and he doesn't care what your discipline is he will ask a dietitian what are the what are the symptoms of pneumonia how do you know you have pneumonia oh that's my favorite when they're like can you diagnose pneumonia off of the scans off of the, off like, the chest x-ray off of the chest x-ray and they're like yeah and he's like wrong he's like oh interesting everybody always cares about ecmo nobody cares about anything else <laughs> just basic physiology everybody wants to do cannulas but nobody wants to do but even in, in the beginning i didn't i didn't really respect him when he did that because i was like listen bitch we all got license why are you asking us these questions we done been through shit but it but when you step out of your own ego he's really trying to help everybody we are in a multidisciplinary approach we take a multidisciplinary approach he's literally trying to help everybody to understand exactly what's going on with this patient and it's so beneficial even i, I always have my students do rounds when dr so-and-so is in rounds i learned a lot from rounds yeah. yeah and i will tell and i will ask him hey dr so-and-so can you ask my students some specific questions grill them i don't care i'm not gonna help them he's like i love this <laughs> <laughs> and he grills the shit out of them but he's not gonna leave you by yourself he's like you can use a lifeline you can use one person but it cannot be this person to help you answer the question yeah no rt for the rt question yeah no definitely they're never there no i think i would like to have a student eventually just not now would you teach you think teach teach oh, for real absolutely yeah i would absolutely teach for real i i love teaching and i love educating people 
um, on stuff, especially stuff that I know, but I like to be relatable. And I, I like to give people what I, w what I was not given as a student. Um, you know, I had even one of my PT um, professors, former PT professors, I hated this man and I still hate him now. Everybody loves him. Um, anyway, his name is Smothers. I'm just going to say his name because I really don't care. She is fucking um, name dropping Yeah, I just don't today. care. You know, it's 2021. He, I hated this man because... Every time I went to him for questions and I'm like, Smothers, I don't get it. Like, I, if you orally test me and you're asking me this stuff, I get it. Once you put it on paper for some reason, my dyslexia just start acting crazy. He's like, well, Monica, I don't know what to tell you. You just, you, you just got to read the information. Bitch, I'm reading and I still don't get it. Can you help give me unlock a key or something? And I hated his approach to doing things. And I, I thought it was the most unhelpful way. So that's why even too, when I passed my boards, I was like, fuck you, bitch. Fuck you. Because you did not help me reach this point at all. Like, I literally felt like I taught my fucking self. And everybody else in class, oh, we love Smothers. Fuck you, Smothers. I'm kidding. No, Dude, no, I real. had Sm one professor who was like, freaking, he was just wild. It was yeah. like nothing he ever said made sense. He couldn't stay on topic for one mm -hmm. thing. He was annoying and he'd go around like, he was also a teacher helper and yeah. like in one of the other anatomy classes. Mm -hmm. And while our main professor was teaching really important shit, he'd be like, hey, did y'all know like if you held this finger down like this, this muscle goes lax and it looks really funny on your, like shit like that. Yeah. But everyone's like, can you fucking read the room? Can you, fu everyone fucking hated him. <laughs> His test never made sense. Yeah. They were the only tests I got A's on in really? all of OT school. Cause I was like, how you're your motherfucking brain doesn't make sense my brain doesn't make sense yeah. so we can thought and bop together on this one and everyone hated him see some others used to give us those pop quizzes every day or every other day or whatever it was i think it was once a week whatever he would give us these quizzes and it was the first 10 minutes of class he was the type of a professor that would give you the quiz and it literally said just write your name and turn the quiz over and that's the quiz and in our brains we're like we are in this program struggling <laughs> like we've been up all night so of course i'm going through these questions like oh my god i'm failing lord jesus and all of a sudden i just see people with their pants down I'm like what the fuck y'all doing y'all ain't gonna take a quiz and i go back to the instruction i'm like oh i was just supposed to do that i'm like how is this helping me smothers god damn because <laughs> no one reads him. the instructions no i like I, I i'm i'm cool with smothers i ain't gonna say i like him i'm cool with him shots out to smothers <laughs> that's it but yeah i mean i i would definitely go into teaching for real I, I love teaching i actually do i love you houston yes but yeah so anyway if you're a student in pt school ot school speech therapy school just do what you got to do to get the hell out come on man we you need to have a speech therapist on here i don't know shit about slp school we didn't have any slps the uh, program started right after i graduated yeah our, my school did not have an slp program um we don't they only just had pt and ot um, yeah, you know what? I'm gonna we're gonna bring on one of our speech therapy, uh, one of our speech therapy colleagues, or maybe even a couple of them. Just depends. Um, that's not Alyssa farting God, again. The, you and this ball. I mean, we've had all this background noise on yeah. this episode. Sorry Tell for the, the background crowd. noise, y'all. But somebody was having a birthday or some shit out there. Um, but yeah, so definitely, students, mind your manners, be humble. See eyes. If you are, if you don't want to teach, don't don't mess up these kids' education. Please don't. And if you're a shitty therapist, don't take a student. Ooh, that one right there. But I feel like a lot of the shitty therapists don't know they're shitty therapists. They know. They just don't care. You think? Yeah. Hmm. I think a lot of shitty therapists at our job, they know they're shitty. People Yikes. make it known. Hot take, hot take. People that people make it known. They just want to sit here and act oblivious because they've been there for a long time. Because people think some, somehow people equate longevity with quality. Yeah, that one. That's a good one. Yeah. And it's like, no, you've been a shitty therapist for 15 years. And I don't know, your friends are not your friends because your friends should have told you that. Also, you can be a burnt out therapist and have been there for 10 plus years and get shitty. But like, I need you to acknowledge that you're now shitty. Yeah. That's why I tell people, I'm burnt out. I can't help you. Yeah. Like, don't pretend that just because you've been here for forever, I'm supposed to just fucking respect the work that you're doing if it's bullshit. Well, this is what happened with, with leaders. You have shitty leaders who have been leaders for 11 years, 10 years, 15 years, and you have been a shitty leader for that long. Your turnover rates are high and you continue to be shitty. You can't you can't think it's everybody else. If you're the the common denominator, bitches, you, you need some introspection on that. Thank you. It, it's the it's the what's the word uh yeah it's the self-unawareness for me yeah the lack of self-awareness yes what did i say self-unawareness self yeah and so, that's where we fucking leave it yeah pretty <laughs> much all right anything else you want to talk about no that's it that's it well thank you guys for so much for joining us today on another episode go out and um go ahead and purchase that 
CBD, those CBD products from My Apothecary. It's a great company. A dope, dope, dope. Dope company. Two black amazing queens. The reason I'm on queens. this ball bending the fuck over is because I got a good back right now from back, all that CBD. Let me tell you something. When I got out that bathroom, that, that, that tub last night, and I put that CBD, that My Apothecary CBD sports cream on my back, Bitch, it felt like a pepper, York peppermint patty was in my back. <laughs> okay. Popped a minto in remember, there Remember we talked about if you could give CBD injections? That's literally what I felt like I had. <laughs> and my back was so, I slept so well because of that sports I'm cream. I'm about to put it on my whole body. Ooh, body, Jesus. body, 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 then body, I, body. I almost put the oil in the bathtub, but I was like, I don't think you're supposed to put that on your body like that. So I'm just, I, I just read under instructions. Under the tongue, man, yeah. under the tongue. Exactly. But I was like, if I could ingest it, I could put it on my body. But anyway, so yes, my apothecary. Yes, yes, yes. Don't awesome. Go. All Run, right, y'all. don't walk. Yes, we'll see y'all next time. Thanks so much for tuning in to another episode of The Face Off with Fleming and Fowler. Don't forget to follow us on all our social media platforms, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube at The Face Off Pod. Be sure to tune in to The Face Off every Tuesday where new episodes are released.